So in this episode, I wanted to answer one of the most common questions that I get these days, which is what do you need to work on to get to GM? So let's get into it. Now, when it comes to my strengths and weaknesses, I generally don't think about my specific strengths very much. Sometimes I play good moves and find good ideas, and maybe I'd say my opening knowledge is pretty decent, but generally I think much more about my weaknesses because I feel like this is where I actually have room to grow and improve. I think the biggest thing I could work on is undoubtedly calculation. It just feels so important, and I feel like I'm making so many mistakes all the time that if I could improve my calculation even by 10-15%, that could really go a long way. And secondly, technique, especially endgame technique. I feel like I've squandered so many games just in the last year. In fact, just in my most recent tournament, I can remember three winning positions that I blew off the top of my head, each simpler than the next against some very, very good players. So going forward, I'm definitely going to try to work a lot on my calculation. And to this aim, I've started already working through the Agard GM Prep series. I also want to read Ramesh's new book on improving calculation. I also got the Dvoretsky book on recognizing your opponent's resources. Uh, you guys will see why in just a bit. And to work on my end games, well, I'll continue sparring as much as I can through Dojo. And I've also got my hands on the new Agard book on end games, a matter of end game technique, uh, which is way more material than I think I can possibly consume in the near future, but is still a ton of great content to work through. So of course, all this brings up something that is not so much a chess weakness, but rather just a challenge to overcome, which is that chess training takes a lot of time and there's just not enough time in the day to do all the things one might want to do. But of course, that's a me problem. And to be honest, I wouldn't trade where I am with anyone. But yeah, I got a lot of books to read. So that's my personal take. But a few months back, I started working with Grandmaster Davran Kulyasevic for about 10 weeks. And if you don't know Davran, he's written some very popular books like Beyond Material and How to Study Chess on Your Own. And he pretty quickly helped me pinpoint some more areas to work on, such as my play in double-edged positions, where I was certainly struggling. And when it comes to the calculation, in particular, spotting tactical resources for the opponent and avoiding enemy counterplay in general. And so it gave me some very useful homework to work on, which included solving difficult exercises, as well as analyzing some high level games by hand and then checking my analysis against the engine. And the work was quite useful, but of course I still have a long way to go. In fact, just recently I had a game where I had a huge advantage as black in the King's Indian and would very likely win if I could just continue the game normally. But at one point I snagged this pawn on a4 and I allowed this trick with knight c5 for the opponent, which just completely turned the game around. And after that, black is just immediately lost. And in fact, I was extremely lucky to have saved the game later on. And this is the kind of thing I think I would find very quickly if it was presented as a puzzle or something. But of course, during the game, it's all on you to stay focused. And unfortunately, at this moment, I just didn't manage. But the point being, even having just one or two of these moments during a tournament, can really ruin the whole event and really hold you back quite a bit. Then more recently, I had a somewhat spontaneous session with Grandmaster Noel Studer, who I asked to try and assess my game as well. If you don't know Noel's blog, nextlevelchess.com, it really has some great content and some wonderful articles on chess improvement. So Noel looked at my games from the past year and gave me some very helpful tips on my play, but also suggested that we look at the numbers to see how I score against players of different levels and which openings were working best for me. So including my recent tournaments, the numbers didn't change too much from when Noel ran the numbers a little while back, and the insights essentially stayed the same. It seems like with white, I'm scoring pretty well, especially against players rated in the 24 to 2500 range. But when it comes to playing black, it's pretty clear that my performance has been subpar, especially against players lower rated than me. Now, interesting thing I learned from Noel is that in general, your performance with white should be a little bit higher than your rating and your performance with black is going to be a little bit lower and that the two performances will essentially average out. But from this, I think it's pretty clear that I have a lot of room to grow when it comes to playing black. I also looked at my performance rating for different openings, which I believe is a pretty common practice for professional chess players. And again, with white, you can see I'm not doing too badly, 
scoring well with 1d4 and even better with the occasional 1 knight f3. But with black, when it comes to my performance, I'm actually not doing that badly against 1d4, c4, knight f3, and, and so on, playing the king's indian. But against 1e4, I've definitely been struggling, and that's no surprise, as I haven't really had such a solid weapon against e4 for the last couple of years. I also looked at my numbers against players around my rating and higher versus players uh, below my rating, and once again, not scoring as well against lower rated players as I could be, especially against 1e4. According to Noel, it's because I take too many risks against lower rated players and then end up allowing them some tactical chances. We saw examples of that already. So moving forward, this is definitely going to be a big thing that I'll have to work on. Then in terms of my strengths, once again, I was mostly interested in what I can do to improve, but both Noel and Davarin seem to think that I have a decent sense for the initiative and overall pretty solid positional skill for what it's worth. And I should say both Noel and Davarin gave me a lot more useful advice and ideas in terms of working on my game, my openings, my decision making, my end games, and so on. But that'll have to be saved for another video. So there you have it. I feel like there's a ton of stuff that I need to work on, and I didn't even mention some things. In fact, Jesse would probably say the biggest thing I should be working on is my rook end games, and he might have a solid point there. But the nice thing is that at least some of the work is cut out for me, and I've got tons of books to go through, tons of training partners within the dojo I can practice against, and so hopefully I can make it out on the other side at least somewhat a stronger player. Taking a look at the habit tracker, as you can see, it's been a very busy time for me, um, but I've really been enjoying using this. Of course, it's kept me focused and on the days that I'm less motivated, it's very useful to have something I can turn to that tells me exactly what I need to be working on. Um, so I'm happy that I haven't missed a day of work when it comes to the dojo. Now, in terms of my own chess training, I've mainly been focusing just on the game analysis. I've played a number of recent tournaments and I'm slowly going through each game, doing some game recaps and annotating the rest, as I feel like this is just the most important thing to get done before I eventually play again. Apart from that, of course, I've been doing a lot of work on the dojo training program, as well as the new King's Indian course, which I'm hoping is going to help my chess in the future as well. This week, I'll be traveling to St. Louis for the Sinkfield Cup, where I'll be covering the event as well as the Chess 960 event afterwards. So that's going to take up the first half of September for me. But I'm still hoping to get at least some calculation training done in the meantime to at least work on my skills a little bit. But obviously, it's going to be a very busy time. After that, I'll be back home and ready to train quite a bit once again. So that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thanks for watching and thanks again for all of the support. Hope you guys enjoyed it and hope to see you in the next video. Take care.